Do you really want to stay motivated? Do you really want to know how to push yourself when you feel like your gas tank's on empty? You ever feel like you are at a low to where you're just like, you know what, fuck it. Because <laughs> if you have, or if you are currently, or if you've done that before, then I got a method which has been my solution now for the absolute longest. Because believe it or not, it is truly human nature to get to a point where you just feel burnt. Where, you know, you hear that that terminology or that explanation that they uh, refer to as spent. Like, you ever hear that? Like, man, I'm spent. Or, man, I just can't do it no more. And it doesn't necessarily even need to be, uh, you know, combined with, like, physical endurance. I'm talking about mental endurance. You know, the real true reason for success is not just within endurance, but it actually has to do with mental endurance. You know, physical helps, but it's not as strong as how how mental endurance is. But anyway, I, I don't want to veer off the subject. The bottom line is, do you want to know how to stay motivated? I got you. Be sure to watch the entire video to make sure that this message and this lesson and this share you truly absorb because this could very well be the video that changes your life. So if you understand again, it goes, it goes future, current, and then past. Always remember that. Future, current, past. Future, current, past. Because what happens is just like a gas gauge, you always want to be filling up. Make sense? You always want to be aiming towards the future. Because what happens is when you start going below that, that, that middle line, it's a, it's a sign. And let that be your sign. Kind of like, oh man, I need gas, right? Or, oh, I'm almost out of gas. You always have to check your meter, always check your gauge and be like, yo, man, I've been I've been running on empty or below my halfway mark for a minute now. And all you have to do, boo-boo, is fill up that tank. And so then you might be like, yo, D, how do you fill up that tank? Simple. You follow at Sales Remastered. Check out the Breakfast of Champions episodes. You know, look through the plethora of videos. Find a topic or a, a, a title that really pops out and rings out to you and, and enjoy the ride. You know what I mean? Like whether it's from here or another channel, find something that influences you to be better, that, fo that enables you to focus on the future and remember just like all the things you went through in the past that will pass. At some point in time, your current state is going to be your future. And at some point in time, your future is going to be your past. That makes sense? But right now, we're in current time, current state. You're right in the middle. And so now it's your choice whether you're going to deplete it or you're going to fill it up. Right, And in order to fill it up, again, find something that pushes you, find your purpose. And I remember, man, I remember I was trying so hard uh, before just to crack five figures. And, but when I, when I changed my circle and I saw people that were making 20 plus, uh, 20K plus per month, and I got to actually be within that group because within my circle before, before you know, when I got demoted, people in there weren't making 10 grand per month plus. They, they were cracking about eight, nine grand. Like we were all trying to strive for that 10K. But when you go into an environment that's already done it and has gone above and beyond, it's some, some, something crazy happens. And I wanna share with you that one four letter word is mind. It is in your mind, it's your belief, it's the way you wire your mind. Because what happened was when I was not cracking that five figure per month, my mindset only obsessed about the things that, that couldn't be. Meaning that, meaning that I, was, I was surrounded by people who haven't cracked five figures in a month. I was surrounded by people who obsessed about $10,000. I was surrounded by people who were fearful of not hitting $10,000 per month again or not, or not getting sales. It was the energy that surrounded me that actually grabbed, that actually grabbed me and kept me down. Because what the, the mind does is it, it gravitates towards things that are familiar to you. The mind actually um, can either lift you up or it can hold you back. And so I want to share with you how the mind, in my opinion, or at least in my example, kept me back is because I was so, I was so worried and focused on what wouldn't happen because I was surrounded by around people who have never made it happen. 
But when I changed my environment and, and I, you know, at the time I thought it sucked because I got demoted, right? Like you think the, the shit is going south when you get demoted and you get kicked out and it fucking sucked. But then I got kicked out to a branch and unfamiliar territory and, uh, you know, I mean, it's a completely different world, but, you know, I took it with stride and I went at it and I, and, you know, and I did it. And oddly enough, when I, when I surrounded myself with people who have already achieved what I've been trying to achieve, and I studied their actions, and I studied their mindset, I studied how they thought, I changed my mindset, I changed my mind, it rewired my mind. Because not only was it possible for these people, but they were doing it all the time. Not only was, were they, were their obsessions on, their obsessions were on different things. You know, their obsessions were on getting the, the next upgrade on a car. Their obsessions were, you know, buying something for their house for their house so this was a different level and so when you're engulfed in this and you're thrown into this and they're telling you that they've made this much per month or you know that they're doing and their energy is different they're happy they're content they're they have confidence and that there's this freedom and and now that i'm within this circle i i was able to adapt and mirror that same exact mindset mirror that same exact uh, energy and that in itself is what is what unlocked you know my, my my potential because my mind shifted my mind went from a place of not not being able to secure that 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 dream to actually being able to secure it and surpass it like i like, like i never hit five figures per month to going from there to almost hitting six figures in one month it's fucking crazy and when that happened, man, no going back, you know, like when you hit something like when like right now, you might have a dream of hitting six figures. But the thing is, though, is that when you hit six figures, then you want more. Right. Just like I would imagine, like when you hit when you hit 100,000, you're going to want to hit 150,000. When you hit 150,000, you're going to want to hit 200,000. Does that make sense? Your whole your whole lifestyle changes and then it adapts to the income. But you want to be careful, though. You know, there's a lot of people that live in check to check and they're and they're making 20 plus K per month. You don't want to go down that path. You still want to be able to um, get your reserves. And I learned that the hard way through 2008 when that happened. Um, but, you know, you always want to make sure you got a pocket full of assets or some sort of um, reserves that are out of sight, out of mind, meaning you don't keep it all in one account. You know, you, you have to store some ducats and some cash flow in an account that you don't see, that you don't look at. Because when you see it and you look at it, it you, you become reliant on it. It's very easy, right? Where if you have other assets where it's just tucked away and it's just it's on some e-statement shit where you don't even get it in the mail to look at it, then that shit just naturally grows. And then you become, you become successful at hacking your mindset to just think what you have inside your checking and savings is all you got. And so you're in this constant zone of, of replenishing and replenishing. But at the end of each month, you're also paying yourself out towards your assets too. So you're, you're replenishing and you're never hit, holding too much money because you're just going to want to spend it. That's where the term is money burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> and so anyway, I learned that as I was young because I was burning holes in my pocket, bro. Like every Tuesday, you know, the thing to do was to just drop a G at Best Buy. You know, I was like, man, I see these galore. I had video games galore. I had the, the, the newest TVs. You know what I mean? Like everything was, it was spending it faster than I could make it because I was making a lot of it. And, and that's another thing that I got from that mindset of those people within that circle was that they were just spending money. They were just burning it up. We all were right is because we knew that we were making it again the next month right so there's just that mindset so if you could figure out how to get and change your environment how to put yourself in the circle where people are already doing it but be strategic and be smart about it right i think that you will not only grow much faster but you're going to unlock what it is that you want and surpass it like get more than it um, and it's very powerful but it all starts with your mind you need to shift your mind mindset you need to change your mind. So, so in other words, if you're in, a, in an area where you just feel like you can't seem to get it or no one around you is getting it, it means your circle's not getting it. But if you could change that circle to, and, and, and 
and go into a circle of people who are getting it or who are on the level of getting it and have gotten it before, um, you know, that's how you're actually going to hit it much faster. You might be like, well, D, how do I get in that circle? Man, you don't need to be in the circle physically. You could be in the circle through digital form. You could be like my digital content, right? Like, like I got a, a, a you know, university link. If you haven't checked it out, there's a link below the video. On these on the notes in that that you're watching it's called sales remastered university do you want me to show you how to sell that in itself is kind of like putting yourself within the circle it's just me and you boo boo it's just me and you on a training course right and I'm telling you exactly what to do exactly how to develop your mindset exactly how to put the pieces in place the process in place to to uh, maneuver and also persuade the operation roles and delegate the tasks that eat up a lot of your time to the individuals that that can do it well and so and so if you can just focus on how to properly originate market and close loans and then you knew how to use and leverage the system within your organization whether small or big like you will you learn how that the logistics works and you learn how to persuade the operations and management and those around you to work for you you, then you can create an engine that that multiplies your income and if you're saying like hey man d man i just want to i just want to make more money well shit man like the, the information is there right it's because it happens to all of us everyone who's who's got a good heart who's who's putting it out there who's going that extra mile there will come a time don't think it's all roses you're gonna get on the street where you just feel momentum and you're like yeah things are good things are really good and then all of a sudden er <laughs> right shit gets real some bullshit happens in it and that event could throw you off course and and ultimately end your momentum because you don't know how to react you you don't think that it's true you're gonna think that you're fucking up and i want you to understand take it in this video that you're not fucking up and I want you to, to learn from this video that when that time does come and when it happens, because again, it will, you need to be strong enough to identify or at least remember and understand that that shit is supposed to happen. Because only the great will be tested like that. Only the absolute strongest will be treated like that. And the and only the successful version of yourself that you have in your head, that you have in, in you know, that you vis envision yourself to be, is the only person that can break through it. So at the time when you feel like it's a curse, or when you feel like the world is on your shoulders, or you feel like you're unappreciated, or you feel like you're. You know what I mean? Like you're just being ignored or being used or you feel like you are you were just a tool. The last thing you want to do is feel, is look inside and feel resentful. What you want to do is take it as a compliment. Just rewire how you look at it. Rewire how you're thinking about it. Instead of thinking someone burned you. What I want you to think of is someone invited you. And you might be like, yo, D invited me what? Invited me to a fire? <laughs> no, what they invited you to is the new version of yourself. They invited you to learn how to be better than who you were. They invited you to learn how to overcome that challenge. They invited you into a thick new layer of skin. Because these things happen. Everything's a cycle. This shit will happen again. And when it happens again and again and again, because that shit does happen. People took advantage of me for the longest time because I had the strongest work ethic. I was very good at what I did. And and people almost treated me like the wind-up toy, right? Like the, if you just wind it up and just let that bitch go, it's going to go. And so so they would wind me up, let me go, and then... And then worry about some other shit. And so I'd be over here wound up, creating a lot of results, creating a lot of fucking energy, getting everything circulating and, and moving. And then and then the wind up would just end. Right? But 
here's the thing is that when that shit, when the, when the use of that tool or that toy or that, that wind up is done, sometimes the person that wound you up will discard you because they got other toys, right? Because you did what you're supposed to do. <laughs> There's no more use for you. And you're going to be that wound up toy that just ended its wind, that just unwound. And now it's just kind of standing there waiting to be wound up again. Until you learn that it is, it is not who winds you up, <laughs> per se. It's, it's understanding how to wind yourself. It's understanding how to move without waiting for someone to wind you up. It's about breaking free from what you believe you need because the reason why you feel burnt or why you feel like you were taken advantage of is because you're looking and relying on that particular person or that particular company or that particular team or whatever it is or that particular family member or that particular spouse to give you that sign of approval or to give you that kudos. You're relying on them and that's why it hurts more. And so when you go through it enough times and realize that this shit happens anywhere and everywhere because everyone has their own motive and that's a separate topic. That's a separate you know, issue or subject is that everyone has their motive. We have our own motive. We do it to our clients, right? Like we're happy to talk to them, but once that transaction is done, well, they're the wind up toy that stopped, that stopped moving. Does that make sense? So to a degree, we also do it. But what we have to realize, though, is that unless you understand how to move without waiting to be wound up, you're always going to be relying on the person that winds you up. So wind yourself up today. Understand that, understand that there will come those times where you're faced with this type of challenge or you're faced with this evil truth. And this is just business. But, it, it, but your reaction is what's going to determine whether or not you're going to break past it or you're going to go backward. And I don't want you to go backward because I've went backward a few times and I've taken extreme actions in going backward. Extreme emotional reactions like, well, fuck this place, fuck you. And you say shit and do shit, you can't turn back. You can't. You burn bridges that you just can't mold back together again. And so the best thing to do is really take a step back, separate yourself from the equation, go get somewhere quiet and remember this video. Remember that that challenge was put in front of you because you can take it. That challenge was put in front of you to test you of how bad you really want it. And if you really want it, then show that you could take it. And if you're on a certain wavelength or if you're on this certain, this certain rhythm or this, this, this kind of like frequency, if you will, stay on that frequency. Don't feel encouraged to drop off that level just because those around you are not hearing that, that song. They're not hearing that rhythm. They're not as motivated as you. You don't need to drop down from your, from your goals. You don't need to, to ease up from your hustle because you don't think it's cool because your group of friends, um, they influence you, hey man, fuck the world, blah, 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 right? You're like, fuck it, I don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like I used to, I used to be encouraged that way. I used to want to be, you know, I, I, I used to think like, man, I'll be all right, man. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm all about these streets, bro. I'm a hustle in these streets. I'm gonna be all right as long as I got my friends around me. And and sometimes it's it's actually those friends that actually hold you down. And the hardest thing to do is leave your friends because well, they're your friends. And we have this fear, and this is where we become our own roadblock that we can't go out and find other friends. It doesn't necessarily mean you don't, you know, you unfriend <laughs> your original core. It just means you find a different level of friends. You find different wavelength of friends. And if if your friends don't want you to level up your life or level up your game or go chase your dreams, then guess what, boo boo? Those are not your friends. They just want company. Misery loves company. And I hope that you find the message that I share with you today as reasons to go even harder. And the next time that you become passionate and try to explain your vision and try to share your dreams and that person you're sharing it to you kind of looks like you, you know, like you're talking a different language, like, like that, 
they give you that face like they don't get it because they're not as motivated or they don't want something as bad as you want it i want you to keep talking and I want you to find the silver lining in that. Instead of instead of thinking like, man, how come no one understands me? How come no one gets me? Do people doubt me? Am I, am I being silly of wanting these certain things? The next time you feel that way, I want you to, to remind yourself of the message in this video and say, you know what? D was right, man. Sometimes people just not are on that wavelength. And all I got to do are find other people who are on that wavelength. Let me go watch a video at Sales Remaster real quick, man. This dude's on that wavelength. And that boob. One of the reasons why we feel like shit's getting out of control is because we're trying to change things. We're trying to, you know, change reality instead of adapt to it and move on. And so why I, I believe that this is important to understand is because when you get there, you're going to want to quit. You're gonna want to, you know, throw in towel and just say fuck it, or you may very well react emotionally. And when I say react emotionally, I'm talking about emotional, no leak. Like you slamming your fucking keyboard, you're slamming your mouse, you're you're saying rude things to people who don't deserve it. You might go off on your manager, <laughs> you might go off on your VP, right? Like you might send it a long, drawn out ass email that could ultimately put you in a light that you don't want to be. And, and on that note, you know, if you ever get like emotional with it, like on an email, I want you to do me one solid. I want you to do me a favor to protect you because ultimately what happens is when you hit that send and then, and then that shit lingers in your head, like fuck, you know, like, damn, did I just really send that email? You try to pull it back, but it's like failed. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, they saw it. You know, and then you, and then that's just lingering in your head. So it's no good for you. If anything, get that shit out. Type it the fuck out. Use caps. You know, <laughs> use caps so you just feel aggressive. Use like three exclamation points. Fuck it. Use six. You know what I mean? Like, get your point out. Bold that bitch. Italic. Underline that motherfucker and highlight it. Like, whatever you got to do, get that bitch out on a fucking email. But don't put, don't fill out the two field, right? Just get that bitch out and just fucking just sing on that fucking email. It's like, you motherfucker, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. And write it all out. Like, that might not be you. You might be like, you know, hey, don't curse like a sailor. And I get that. That's cool. I appreciate that. So then don't curse. Don't use, just use fucking caps and, and all that bullshit. But just tear it, you know, uh, uh, really tear it up. Like, just put it all out there. But don't send it. <laughs> right? It's important you don't send it. Like, just minimize it and then, and then come back to it. But believe like you were about to send it. Because what happens is, after you write that out, after you pull your heart out, and and a couple minutes goes by, you revisit that email, and this could be to anyone. This could be your boss, to your to your to your loved one, to your family. Um, it could be to your prospects. A lot of times, I've done it to my prospects. Like man, so I <laughs> I reply back to a prospect and I just tear it up. Like man, are you fucking serious? And I'd use you know um, kind of uh, uh, antagonizing comments and statements, like like very sarcastic, like like I'm talking to them as if they're a kid and they don't understand the ABCs and shit. And and, uh, and I used to just fire that bitch off, send it, and then just kind of deal with the repercussions later. But uh, you know, I learned to 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 hold back, and so I'll, I'll minimize the email and come back like five minutes later and realize that all that shit was just emotional. And I thank God I didn't send it. Right, like woo, good thing I didn't send it, bro. Because one thing that one of my mentors taught me was that hey man like the you know the prospects are there to test you right like things are just there to test you you know life is there to test you but the reason why it's testing you is because you asked for it right like you want to be great you're going to be tested if you don't want to be great then just lay low don't do shit like you're just going to be ungreat right and it made a lot of sense because you know as you try and climb and as you try and be great you're going to come across these challenges it's kind of like just the cost right it's like the it's the ticket you pay to enter and if you if you pay it right and you maneuver through it and you pass it then you're going to be all right. You're going to make it through. Right? But I need you to understand that there are two ways to look at this. When you get in this mindset, I want you to know that I'm empathetic with you too. I want you to know that I've been through it. And so for the last 10 minutes, I shared empathy of how we go through it. Like I understand it. I get it. But at the same time, I need to talk to you and be that coach. I need to hold you accountable. Because at the end of the fucking day, right, regardless of whatever the fuck happens, you're going to move on. You're going to move forward. It will be the next day. And when you wake up the next day, I don't want you to fucking wake up and regret what the fuck you did the day before. So if you got to unplug, 
right? If you got to go take a day off, if you got to go walk out the building and, and text your manager or fucking email your manager or email your VP or whoever the fuck that, hey man, like I'm just not in the right state of mind. You know, I just need to unplug. I need to go do me. I need to figure myself out. I need to be in silence because this shit happens to us when we're nonstop go, go, go. And we're working six, seven days a week when we're plugged into our emails at home and, and we just catch ourselves waking up, going straight to our inbox and then and then just filtering data all day long, handling issues on our day off. We don't stop working. And the brain, when it doesn't unplug, when it doesn't when it doesn't stop processing information it's like a computer you ever get a computer that overheats and that shit just like you hear the fans turn on shit like oh shit this motherfucker's about to blow up well that's kind of like our brain our brain just it kind of mushes and then it just freezes right like like our brain will, will you'll be in the middle of your day you just can't fucking focus like i get it that's what i'm saying the empathy but at the same time i'm gonna be that voice that holds you accountable and this is how look you are you right like if you if you allow things you can't control to determine your your outcome your result that's on you boo boo like you get it so if you in other words if you choose to blame everything but your fucking actions that's on you boo boo you got to understand that wherever the fuck you are right now mentality wise physically what you know financially everything every motherfucking thing right now how you feel at that fucking moment is is the direct result of all the fucking actions that you took and you might be like yo d but man i'm doing everything right like i'm positive and i'm, I'm blah 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 yeah that's what you want to see but when you get real fucking honest with yourself and you fucking get that self-awareness kit like kicking in your brain right like you self-aware as fuck like you you really admit shit because it's just you right you don't need to fucking be out there talking to people say yeah admitting your feelings you're not at fucking church you're not you know giving a confession like talk to yourself go inside a car go go in the dark ass room go meditate and really analyze your fucking decisions because what you're feeling and why you're burnt out and why you're doing this is because of you it's not because of your manager, it's not because of the market, it's not because of the price, it's not because of the cost, it's not because of this dude or that dude or him or her, right? The only way, only thing that you can be using external things is for justification, 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 you know what I mean? I just want to curse so bad because I get passionate on this fucking subject, man. What I'm talking about by justification is when you look externally and you see him, her, him, 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 her, 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 and they're fucking eating... What I'm talking about eating is they're fucking doing it, right? They're taking the fucking situation that you thought was fucking tough and they're making it work and they're fucking winning with it. That is because they chose to own the fuck up. They chose to, to, to look inward and instead of looking inward and say, man, what the fuck are you doing and looking for problems? They're looking for fucking solutions. And so that person took that fucking same circumstance and made that bitch work. And so that should be justification as to why you could do it too, but if not, do it better. Does that make sense? Take that as a fucking challenge. Like, hey man, how come this motherfucker isn't burnt out? Hey man, how come that motherfucker is eating? Hey man, how come this person is so fucking positive? You get it? Because if you decide to give up, if you decide to quit, if you decide to go search for that greener side, if you decide to throw in the white towel, believe me, bro, you're going to face that shit the next day. And when you face that shit the next day, and should you regret that fucking action you took, guess what? That bitch is going to anchor you the fuck back. It's going to take a minute. It's going to take a long ass minute to fucking tear off those weights, to tear off that anchor, to tear that bitch out of your mind. And, and ultimately what you're doing is you're just trying to melt away the regret. And regret is some bullshit, man. You don't want regret in your fucking life. You don't want to look back and be like, what the fuck did I just do? Because that shit weighs on you. You get it? And so I hope you get this message now before it gets that far because at the same time I want to be empathetic with you. I need to hold you accountable. I need you to tell I need to tell you like it is. Because if no one's telling you like it is and you don't want to listen to how it is because your support group or your fucking best friend or your your homies, your your circle, your work group, they're going to tell you all that fluff shit. They're gonna all, they're gonna tell you all that all that fucking love shit, right? Like, oh, it's okay, you know. Hey, it's cool. You got this. You got that. It's cool. It's better times, you know. Fucking, you could be a, a shoulder to cry on for for that person, but at the same time, someone needs to tell them the fucking truth. You need to wake the fuck up, right? Like you, hey, all this 
fucking bitching, moaning, crying, and all this weeping and all this regretting bullshit, man. You, what the fuck does that do for you? Ain't nobody care about that shit. Ain't no manager out there. Ain't no VP. Ain't no fucking body care about that shit. Because why? Because they got their own fucking drama. They got their own fucking problems. And you know what? They're trying to figure it the fuck out themselves. So while you're trying to, you know, attract this fucking empathy and be like, man, feel sorry for me. Hey, man, I'm going through it. We got to wake the fuck up. And, I, and I'm guilty of it, too. Man, I used to, man, I'm guilty of it, too. So I understand it. But when I when I look inward, I, I have to find myself to, talking to myself like I do. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing right now. Like I have to tell myself that I'm the only motherfucker that can really hold myself accountable. Right. I'm not looking for for it from anyone else. Right. Like I'm not looking for it from my wife, from my manager, from my leader. I need to rely on my motherfucking self because ain't nobody going to fucking make my day right stronger than I can. Ain't nobody going to going to take control of my current time and determine my my destination like I can. In other words, ain't nobody driving this motherfucking shit but me. And so I hope these words ring true, man. I hope you dig out, you know, through the curse words and through the aggressive tone. I hope you dig out the positive message. And you fucking, it, this shit makes you stronger as you move forward. Because I want you to understand that regardless of, of, of how you feel at that time, when you're in that state of mind, you need to wake the fuck up. And remember that everyone fucking goes through it. See, the thing is, is how you go through it determines how you're going to be when you go through it and after you, you know, go through that bitch. Because if you went through it weak, if you went through it like you just fucking quit and try to run away from it, guess what's going to happen when, you, you know, the next day? You're just going to wake up and you're going to be that fucking person that ran away. You're going to be that fucking person that gave up. You're going to be that fucking person that just continues blaming. And that shit ain't going to take you nowhere but fucking blame land and shit. Like, just, you know, you know you're in blame land because ain't nobody moving, ain't nobody progressing, ain't nobody moving forward, ain't no one eating, no one's getting paid, right? But, but it's just a bunch of fucking people complaining, moping, you know what I mean? Crying, whining and shit, pointing fingers and just blaming life like, whoa, the fuck is me? But we don't do that around here, around these parts. So I'm so glad you found the channel and I'm so glad that we get to spend some time together each and every single fucking day. I want you to wake someone up who may be in that state of mind, in your circle, one of your friends, one of your camp, one of your family who's going through that shit, wake them the fuck up. Send them this link, send them this video and be like, yo bro, you gotta check this shit out, man. Tell me this shit isn't speaking to you. And uh, and maybe they'll subscribe, comment, and timestamp their favorite part of this video. I appreciate you guys' time. Don't forget to check out the sale. There's a link below. It takes you straight to salesremaster.com. At the very bottom of the uh, of the website, there's this free sales script, man. I'm telling you, a lot of the shit that we go through and that, that, that frustration that we muster up or we collect and ultimately explode is because we're having a tough time in other things. So we may have a, be having a tough time in originating sales. And so while we're putting out all these fires, we don't see sales coming in and we feel like we're going backward. We feel like we're going down. Well, I got this fire-ass sales script that's going to help you continuously keep that momentum because ain't nothing stronger for your confidence than winning ain't nothing stronger for your confidence than knowing that you are making it that you are successful that's how you you beat that mind that state of mind there's this one saying and i'll and i'll end it with this um and i found it on um this this uh this painting man it, it rings true it's so true and it's that work ethic eliminates fear Think about that shit, cause it shit's true. I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Yeah, gotta stick to the G codes. Yeah. I keep a stick everywhere I go. Uh. I'm from the section where the Asians cold. Frontline pressing of a nigga trying to get bold. Married to the streets, I need a wedding ring.